Milton Avery was always looking at life and the joy of life and through the genres that he worked in, portraiture, still life, principally landscape, that kind of joy of, of living and life and, and celebrating the world really strongly comes through. Milton Avery was an American painter um, and is associated with American modernism. Um, he's really celebrated in America. He was popular during his lifetime. And he's one of these artists who's always been an artist artist, meaning that other artists really understand his brilliance and have gravitated towards him. This show starts with early works that he did, uh, plein air works uh, from, the, from the teens, 1915 approximately. And he was in school um, in Hartford at that point. Those works literally we had to open drawers, find them. They had not even been stretched ever before. And um, nobody had taken the trouble to really understand the genesis of Avery. You know, he's painting those early pictures right in the middle of the First World War. And then you have him evolving as an artist. 20s into 30s, you know, it's the Depression in New York. It's a pretty dark time. You know, and there's not a lot of vibrancy, but you still see his subtlety with color, but it's not very, there's not a lot of joyful tones. And then into the 40s, things start to change. His, his colors start to dial up, and that's, I'd, I'd say those, those are the colors he's most known for. He and my grandmother and my mother over the decades, they made a real effort to go different places. You know, even in the Depression, nobody had any money, but somehow they'd figure out like a place to stay in Vermont for the summer, in Connecticut, a summer in Gaspé Peninsula, coast of Maine, Provincetown, and um, they drive there and rent a barn to stay in or something. You know, it was very, very bare bones, but it was the spark of the idea for the next season, for going back to New York in the winter in the studio, you know, you'd be working off of those fresh sketches. And they kept doing that, you know, throughout pretty much through the end of his life. They were, they were searching for new, new vistas, really. He started doing portraits when he was still in training in Hartford, and we have a number of portraits here, but he stopped doing proper portraits in about 1939. The only ones he continued doing were self-portraits. But he didn't lose the figure from his compositions. The figure still became really important in his work, but it was, it was faceless, it was featureless. And, and what he was able to do with the figure was treat it in the same way as he treated the landscape or he treated an object in his still lives. So he was, um, he was able to kind of shape it in a very particular way. So it had this remarkable ability to fuse itself with the situation in which he placed it. They are really reduced. We know it's the, the, the human form, but we start to look at it in a very different way. We're looking at the, the shapes that the human body has and how it's mimicked by the landscape as well. In later works, he was spending a lot of time in Provincetown on Cape Cod. And so there's a real focus on the sea and the dunes and the beaches and the changing tides. You see the landscapes that he created in the late 1950s, 1960s, and he's paring everything away. So you have reduced um, detail in the painting. They look abstracted at first sight, but he's not inventing anything. And that's the important key thing, that although he's taking things away, he's distorting, he's using non-associative colors, he's not inventing, he's not creating anything, as he put it himself, that the eye cannot see. It's his time period that allows that fluid movement between American modernism and American abstract painting. And Avery chooses to come to the brink of abstraction, but then walks away, you know, to paint what he called observed reality.
I always say that, um, and I feel it myself, I've experienced myself, you always feel better having seen a Milton Avery painting. And there's something just so uplifting about them. They're celebratory, they're joyful, there's often humor there as well. Um, it's, it's something that we all need, it gives you that lift.